Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm doing great. I went and did some speed shopping and some speed putting up. And uh, I'm sorry I'm late. That's why I'm late. I went and bought some groceries for my family. I didn't get to do that yesterday, so I had to do it today. Because I um, just needed to get it done. You know how it is. Us women, we got to get things done while we can. We were down to um, chicken. That's all we had. So I had to go get some beef and some different things. And some vegetables. And I eat a lot of yogurt and um, fruit. Instead of eating sweets, I eat that. And so I had to go and get that. I hope y'all had an awesome, action-packed Monday. I actually got quite a bit done today, but I didn't get up very early. Got up really late. If I would have gotten up early there, earlier, there's no telling what else I could have gotten accomplished. So what I want to talk to you about tonight is we all have scars. We've all been through things. We've had deep hurts. We've had traumatic things happen in our lives, so we all have scars. Even Jesus has scars. So that is what I want to talk to you about tonight. I may not be on here very long. I haven't had dinner yet. And um, I need to get off of here <clears throat> and feed Seth. He didn't eat lunch very well. He didn't really like what I had for lunch, but it's all I had. So, I think we're going to jump into some prayer. I'm listening to Rest on Us, which is such a good song. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer, and let's get into this topic. And it's probably going to be mostly me speaking, because I haven't had a chance to get uh, any scripture. I did find one while I was setting up my share information. Okay, well, let's pray. I see that my friend Josie is here. Hi, my friend Josie. I hope you had an awesome day. My sister Josie, she's my sister in Christ. God, we just come to you and we just praise you and thank you, God, because you do provide for us the things that we needed. God, you provided me just enough time to run and get the things that I needed for this week. And I thank you for that. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge, God. And you are on your throne and you are still in control. No matter what men think, you are still in control. And God, we know that all things will be done for your glory according to your perfect will and your your perfect timing God so we just trust you we just trust you with everything that we have God we just thank you because you are magnificent and powerful and mighty God you are the righteous judge but you are loving and kind and compassionate and you are long-suffering towards sinners God sinners just like us you are long-suffering you are patient God you want none to perish God Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their hearts and their minds to the truth, God. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. That you would soften their hearts, God. We pray for the prodigals to return. We pray for the Israelis and the Palestinians as they lob rockets at each other God we just no one is winning God I just see a lot of destruction I see a lot of people that are hurt I see a lot of people that have been killed so I just pray for both both groups of these people God I know somebody started it but no one wins in war and so God we pray for peace we cry out for peace for these two groups of people and we just pray for peace through Jesus 
We also pray for all the many people that have lost loved ones, God. We pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We just pray that they would feel your presence, God. I pray for my son-in-law as his grandfather is crossing over to the arms of Jesus today. More than likely, he might have already done it. God, please give them peace, comfort, and strength as this happens. And give um, his grandfather a peace, God to know that he will never be in pain again. He'll never be in another hospital, God. He will be totally free. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so let's talk about scars. So let's start with what I shared today on Facebook. Um, the song Scars by I Am They. I really like it and so when God started talking to me about scars today that we all have scars um, I was looking at my hands I was trying to find some I know I have scars on my hands I know there was a long time that I had a scar on my wrist from um, when they did my IV when I was when I was having Brittany, they couldn't get the, my IV was burning, and I have a scar here somewhere where the doctor came in and did the IV because um, they didn't use a big enough needle, and so it quit burning after the, after he put a bigger needle in it, but it's in one of my wrists, I don't know, but it's a, it's a tiny little scar where maybe he got a little rough, but he got the job done. <laughs> So we all have scars. We all have scars either in our hearts from hurts that we have had in the past. Sometimes we have physical scars from injuries and things, but we all have scars. There is not anyone, I don't think, in this world that doesn't have a scar from some kind of something that has happened in their life. So, um, if you get a chance, go and listen to this song because it is really a good song. So I love this song in Message by I Am They. I love the lyrics of this song. My words today, we all have scars. We all live with our scars from our pasts. When we are reminded of them, it is painful. But we don't have to stay there in these thoughts. We don't. We do not have to go to the past and live in the past and live over the hurts that we've had in the past. We don't have to do that. We have a Savior that has visible physical scars from the sacrifice of taking on our sin and shames that proves the love that He has for each one of us. I'm going to fix this. <laughs> I didn't proofread very well. I don't like it when I have mistakes. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Sorry. I didn't see that when I proofread earlier. Alright. I do not want to chat directly with people. So it's changing it. Okay. There we are. Let me get this scooter back over. Ugh. I hate the way it does that. Okay, well now it's got to come over enough that I can read. Okay, so we have a Savior that has visible physical scars from the sacrifice of taking on our sin and shames that proves the love that He has for each one of us. God does not want us to dwell on our scars or the scars of Jesus. He wants us to live in the here and now. He wants us to know that our scars and the scars of Jesus do not define our present and there is great hope in our futures. He is already working on the details of our futures and Jesus our King is coming to get us. We need to, be, we need to just be ready. Scars hurt, some are physical, some are emotional, and some are so deep that we cover them up pretending they don't exist. 
Jesus wants to heal us from all of our hurts. He loves us right where we are now. Trust him to wipe away all of your tears. If you are in bondage of past scars, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. He knows all that you have endured. Come as you are now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So we all have scars. And yes, they hurt. I have visited some of mine today. And yes, they're painful. And yes, even though we are forgiven of the mistakes that we've made that caused these scars, we still, it still hurts. It still hurts us. But we are not to live in that. We are to move forward with God. We are to keep walking with Jesus. We are to live in the here and now and be thankful for everything that we have, large or small or medium. We are to be thankful. We are to trust God with all that we have. I think what God is telling me is do not live in the future. Do not live in the past live in the here and now and I think that's what he is trying to share with me this week is live in the here and now do not go back to the past and live in the past do not try to figure out what your future holds but live in the now live in the now be thankful for what you have and live now now I wanted to look up Isaiah 53 because Seth, you need to go in there and watch your show. Isaiah 53 says this. Um, okay, and this is talking about Jesus. This was back in Isaiah. He was talking about Jesus. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people hath, was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. This is Jesus that I'm talking about. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. 
He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So that's Jesus that Isaiah was talking about. That is our Savior that took on our sin and shame. And you know, more than just the scars in his hands and feet, also, I'm sure he has scars on his back and his legs from all the beatings that he took before he was crucified. He was nearly beat to death with cat of nine tails before he was crucified. So he took, and that's what they talk about the stripes. And that was, that was my scripture today. With his stripes, we are healed. I don't know whether you can see that or not. With his stripes, we are healed. I don't think, I don't think YouTube can read it. Okay, it's not, my camera at the bottom is not as clear as my phone camera. But it says, with his stripes we are healed, Isaiah 53, 5. And we just got through reading all of Isaiah. Well, let's move on. Let's move on to the crucifixion and let's read about that. Because sometimes we think our hurts and scars are so very important. Well, what about what Jesus did for us? What about his pain, his major pain that he went through? Let's see if I can just find find something. I'm thinking in John is where it talks about Okay, so this is Jesus' trial. And I don't want to read all that. Um Okay, here we go. So this is Thomas. We remember, we call him Doubting Thomas. But we might have doubted too if we had seen what Jesus endured. We might have doubted too. We call him Doubting Thomas, but we could have been doubters too. So I'm going to start in um, John 20. And uh, let me see where I want to start this. Okay, I guess I'm just going to start on 15 where Jesus is talking to, I think Mary. Yeah, it's Mary. So Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She returned, she turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews because they, they were afraid 
they were afraid that they were going to be next. So they mm. they ran mm. and hid. Uh, uh, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So he breathed on them the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. In many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So Jesus has scars. I'm pretty sure he has them on his back, too, and his legs, and probably even on the front of him, because they they beat him. So I'm going to look in the back of my Bible and see if it says anything about scars. Sometimes you can get, like, one, one word in the scriptures, and sometimes it's just not even mentioned. Uh, no. Scatter and scarcely, but no scars. But that's okay. So, some of my scars are, like I said, I don't have very many visible scars. I have a I have a visible scar here from a wreck. Um here on my chin. My teeth went through my lip in a wreck when I was seventh or eighth grade. Anyway. So I have that scar right there. I have this over here from the tanning bed. Nobody told me I had to cover up my face. So, the tanning bed, I did not spend much time in. Um, what else do I have? Well, I've been very blessed with not having surgeries. I've had babies, but I haven't had surgeries. And so, I don't have any scars from that. Nor do I want any. Um... But a lot of my scars are inside my heart. Um, times that people wronged me. Times that maybe I didn't make the right decision and I suffered a consequence. Um, 
So we mm -hmm. all have scars. Mm -hmm. Like I said, some of them are visible, some of them are mm -hmm. invisible. But the scars mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. With those scars, we have been healed, and we have been set free, and we are no longer in bondage to our sin because of the scars that Jesus has. So I would say his scars are the most important. His scars show us this song um, says, because of your scars, I know your heart. And so his heart is full of love for us. And there are so many people that are unsaved right now that need Jesus. There are so many people that are going through things that they don't even have to go through by themselves, but they choose to because they don't want to give up some things that they enjoy and um, really there is more joy without <coughs> sin and shame there is more joy without it there are more blessings without it there are things that God calls you to do that if you're in sin he won't use you in the capacity that he wants to use you <coughs> He used a lot of sinful people in the Bible. That is so true. And they have scars too. King David had scars. He had scars from either doing things that were wrong. Sometimes he was fighting with people. Um, but we, the point is we all have scars. We are not going to get out of this life without hurt without um, disappointment. We're not going to get out of this life without that. We're all going to have the scars of the heart. Some of us will always have physical scars. And I don't know whether when we get our perfected bodies if our scars go away. I don't know. Jesus still has his. Jesus still has his scars. So I don't know. That's a good question. Or it might not even matter when we get to heaven, when we get to that paradise, that place of perfection. And I'm sorry my son is in here irritating me. I set up something for him to watch, and apparently he didn't want to watch it. So this is... Um, <laughs> My afternoon meeting with God, because I did not get up until 11.30. And so by the time I got up, it was lunchtime. Seth was eating breakfast at lunch. We both slept in today. I guess we were tired. So I said, good afternoon, God. Good afternoon, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings. New opportunities to share my truths and the gospel of Jesus. Seth. He doesn't do sign language. New opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new day, child, to get your work done to. A day to talk to your husband to about moving forward. Keep moving forward, child, and do not live in the past. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings. New opportunities to share your truth in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for all my blessings and for my scars, too, that have taught me so much because our scars do teach us so much and the opportunities to encourage others uh, by empathizing with them. We all have different scars according to the plans and purposes for our lives, according to your perfect will and perfect timing. Help me to remember that Jesus has scars too for the punishment that was put upon his perfect body for me and all sinners. God, help me to share with others the importance of our scars 
Help me to use my scars to help others and to encourage them also. And he said, yes, child, scars are to remind not to choose that again, to encourage others that there is wisdom and hope through the scars in their lives. Jesus can save them from the bondage of their past and their scars. Keep reminding people that their past sins and scars do not define them in my eyes. Child scars are necessary as a reminder to not go back. A severe thunderstorm watch has been issued for your location. All right, we're under severe thunderstorm watch. Okay. Do not go back, but to keep moving forward with Jesus, child. I love all the people that I have created. Some of them are stuck in their past and cannot move forward. They need to be released from this bondage so they can move into their future with Jesus. And only Jesus can set them free, child. I have taught you to not live in the past, but the present. And this is so important. I'm going to take this out if we have thunder and stuff. Um, I don't know how the wireless stuff works with lightning. Um, important and equally important not to live in the future either, but to live in the present always. Being thankful for all that you have and are able to do, child. Mm -hmm. Keep moving forward with Jesus and walking mm -hmm. in the Spirit. Walk in righteousness, child. Soon the age of deception ends and the great awakening will take over. Truth will reign eternally, child. Be amazed as this unfolds before your eyes. Be ready for the reunion, child, and continue walking in obedience to me. And I said, thank you, God, for meeting me this afternoon. Help me to get things done. Even though it is late today, help me to express my feelings also without anger. Help me to get done what I need to get done also, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go and do all I ask. The reunion is soon, child. The deception ends and the deliverer, my son, comes. Soon all evil will prevail for a short period of time. My children will all be with me safe and secure, especially the most innocent. Mm -mm. You know, I believe that the most innocent, the children, you know, it says that the children will go in the rapture. I believe it's to protect them from the evil, from the evil to come in the tribulation is going to be, we think it's evil now, but it's going to be so much worse. We do not want to be stuck in this tribulation. It is not going to be good. You think you don't have rights now, you're going to absolutely have no rights at all. You're going to have to do exactly everything that the um, the evil leaders want you to do. We think we have evil now, but we really have not seen evil yet. It is to come. And it is going to be very, very, very bad after the rapture. After Jesus comes to get his bride, to get the church, to get all the believers that have been saved through him, then it is not going to be good. Even the movies that are meant to give us a glimpse of what this time period is going to be is not accurate. I don't think we can imagine. I think it's like heaven. We can only imagine what it's going to be like. It is not going to be good. Do not be left behind. So let's do a very short, just do a very short uh, salvation message because I need to, I'm the meteorologist in my family, so I need to look at the radar and see what the storms are doing. Okay. So this is God's invitation to his heaven because God heaven does not belong to us. It belongs to God. He created it. He created it for his children. 
And so it doesn't belong to us. It's not ours. It's God's. So this is God's invitation into his heaven. Mm. Have you ever been invited? You know, there are people that have never, ever had anybody ask them if they want to be saved. The time is now to respond to his invitation. Mm. Repent and turn to the one true God. So it says how to accept his invitation. Well, here's some scriptures about salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 But God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. And so this is what John saw. John saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. And so this is a prayer. This is a salvation prayer. It is not the prayer that saves you. It is the belief in Jesus. It is just like Thomas. When he saw the scars of Jesus, he believed that that was Jesus. Until then, he did not believe. He did not believe that that was Jesus. He believed in Jesus when Jesus was alive, but once Jesus was put to death, Thomas did not believe him. He had to see his scars. He had to see those scars so that he would believe. So you have to believe in your heart that Jesus came to die for you. You have to believe that he is God's one and only son. And that not only did he die, that on the third day he rose and he showed himself to many people. We read about him showing himself to the disciples. And um, then he ascended into heaven. So this is just a prayer that, that covers all that. And so we need to invite Jesus into our heart to be our Lord and Savior and to be our um, to save our soul to save our soul so I'm going to say this prayer and you can repeat it after me if you would like dear Lord Jesus I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness that's something else we need to do we have to ask for forgiveness I believe that you are God's one and only son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. Ah. 
In your name I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his Son. Forever. He took your sins and he washed them as white as snow. You can leave your scars behind and you can move forward into the present and leave the future to God. Let God work out the future. Just be in the present. Rest in God. That's what we talked about last night. Was resting in God. But while I was doing that prayer, God wants me to share something with you. A very deep scar that I have. Let me think what year this was. In 2000 and... Was it 2002? I'm trying to think. So between my daughter that's 35 that I had when I was 25, I got pregnant before I got pregnant with Seth. And I was like nearly two months pregnant. And we were so excited. So, so excited about this baby. We even named him. We named him Isaiah. We knew it was going to be a boy. We named him Isaiah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we read Isaiah tonight. Okay, this was meant to be. So I was at work, and I was looking, needed to find something. And so I got permission to go to the old office, the old promise office. And I was looking for something. I don't know what I was looking for. But with my looking, I was moving boxes. And I kind of remember when I lifted that really heavy box. Because as pregnant women, sometimes we forget that we're pregnant. And we just continue doing the things that we always do. But that day... I started miscarrying Isaiah. And I've lived with this very deep pain of knowing that I felt responsible. I felt guilty. It's a very deep scar. It's a very deep hurt. And I shared with you one night uh, about my testimony of Seth being my promise. He's my promised baby. He's the baby that God promised me. Um, but that is a very deep hurt and a very deep wound and a scar in my heart. But I have to remember that Isaiah is with Jesus. And Isaiah is in perfection. And I don't know whether Isaiah was going to be perfect or not. I don't know. And I could what if, and what if I hadn't done that, and what if I hadn't picked up that box, and what if... It happened. It happened. So if this has happened to you, 
Know that it's okay. Do not feel guilty. Do not feel ashamed. Know that Jesus bore all of our sin and shame. And he has the scars to prove it. I have the scar in my heart to prove what I went through. But not only that, someday, someday, I will meet Isaiah. Someday in heaven, there is a baby waiting for me, and his name is Isaiah. And he knows that he was loved, he is loved. And he knows a blanket keeps coming down. Sorry about that. I don't know why that blanket can't stay up. Anyway, my cat tore up my chair. That's why there's a blanket on my chair. But anyway, God wanted, while I was doing that prayer, God was going, I want you to share that. I told you that these scars are to encourage people. Just know that God... If you feel guilty about anything like that that has happened, know that God will forgive you. Know that God is not going to throw it up in your face constantly. <sighs> know that there is hope. Yes, there's a scar there, but I know that my scar will be completely healed someday. When I look upon that baby that I did not get to be the mother to here, but I know that it is in Jesus' care. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about him mm. at all. Mm. And so I just wanted to be real. And I wanted to share that. Oh. And I hope none of you judge me about my mistake. Because we all make them. Mm. We all make mistakes. And mm. I don't know whether that baby would have been a full-term baby or not. I don't know. Mm. Um, I don't know whether it would be a Down syndrome baby. I don't know. I don't know. But I will meet that baby someday. And he will be perfect in every way. And he will have spent 16, well wait, 18 years with Jesus. Because I miscarried him, I guess in 2002. I had Seth in August, so yeah, I miscarried him in 2002. And Seth was born in August 25th of 2003. I know that so well because of all the doctor's appointments. I'll never forget this child's birthday because I've had to write it so many times. Sometimes I think it's my birthday and when I fill out forms, I uh, think it's mine. Okay, well, God wanted me to share that, and I'm always going to be obedient to God. And I didn't do it to make anyone sad. I have other friends that have had miscarriages, and it is like a death. It is like a death. You don't have a body. You don't have any place that you can go and visit. But it is like a death. It is grief. Miscarriages are not anything to just go, oh, it's no big deal. It is a big deal. It is hurtful. It is painful. But there is hope. There is hope. We don't have to stay there. We can move forward. God is going to bless us. God may bless you with another baby. Who knows? I know a lady that had a miscarriage, and now she has a new baby. That happened to me with Seth. But I just wanted to share that. Well, God wanted me to share it. I wanted to keep it hidden in secret, but he's my boss. And so I try to do what he tells me to do. All right, well, I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to pray real quick. My friend Josie never did come back, and I need to go and feed Seth. And I'm sorry if he was disturbing by his noises. I just kind of tune him out a lot. He is nonverbal, so he just makes noises, and he's not happy right now because what's on TV is not making him happy. And my husband's taking a nap, so I am the only adult that is um, 
adulting and parenting. I'm the only adult that's parenting in this house tonight. So let me pray very quickly for us and get off of here and I'll go get him something to eat and I need to look at the weather too. So anyway, um, let's pray. God, we just want to thank you, God. We want to thank you for our scars. We want to thank you that you, that Jesus has healed us, God. That he has healed our hurts, that he has healed our scars that he gives us hope, God. We want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for the scars that Jesus has where he took on all of our sin and shame, God. And he took beatings for us, God. And his precious blood was shed. An innocent man took on all that we had. God, because of the tremendous love that you have for us, that you did not want us to continue to walk in suffering, that you want us to be able to bring our burdens and lay them at the feet of Jesus, God, that you want to know what our problem is. You want to help us to work things out with the problems that we have, either from our past, our present, and you want to you want to lay everything out for our future, God. You don't want us worrying about our future. You want us to live in the present with you, God, to enjoy being blessed by our obedience, God. God, I just lift up anybody that's watching this, God. If anyone has had a miscarriage, God. Let them know that you see their hurt, you see their pain, you see that scar, God, and that Jesus will heal it for them, and that one day they will meet that child. They will meet that child one day, God, that for some reason your plan and purpose for that baby was to be with Jesus. God, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you that you created us. You created us to walk in your greatness. You created us to live out your plans and purposes for our lives in your perfect timing and according to your perfect will, God. We just thank you for all the things that you do in our lives, God. We just praise you for salvation, God, and for an eternal home that will not compare to this home at all. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, my pray and share warriors, you are each so precious to me. I pray that God will bless your families abundantly. Let me give you this blessing from God. I nearly forgot. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Yes, peace. Israel needs peace. Palestine needs peace right now. These people need peace. So pray for them. Pray for all truth to rise above all the lies of all things that are going on right now in our country and all over the world. Pray for a revival that cannot be stopped. A Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. I hope to see you again. Good night.